Welcome once again to Music and Meditation with Pastor Fred and Sharon Moore. And thank you, Sharon, for that rendition of O oh, Worship the King. The wonder of worship is what we're going to be talking about today. Listen to these words of Scripture, Psalm 95, verses 1 through 6. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth, and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. In Luke 4, 8, And Jesus said, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Psalm 95, 6. Come, let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Worship. You know that word. It appears 165 times in the Old Testament, 73 times in the New Testament. Generally, we think of worship as honoring God, but in modern society, the word is no longer simply recognized as the worship of deity. It's also consumer brands, sports teams, celebrities. It's a form of praise. We worship. Oh, I worship that team. We say such things as, I worship my wife. I worship my husband. I worship our children. To worship, you see, is to show love and adoration for something or someone. I found this acronym for worship. W is for wait upon the Lord. O, offer our lives as a living sacrifice. R, rest in his presence. S, sing praise to him. H, humbling ourselves before him. I, intimacy with God. And P, praising him. Worship, you know that word? It comes from an old Saxon word, worth ship, something worth value, something to value. So what do we value in our worship services? We certainly value singing, don't we? We value sharing. We value preaching, I hope. However, we can worship with people. We can worship alone every moment of every day, whether alone or in a group, we can pray and we can sing, right? Yes, that's true. In fact, we can certainly sing when we're alone. A favorite hymn, a chorus, a praise song. Come, let us bow down to the Maker. Bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. You remember choruses like, Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. Yes, and Jesus loves me. This I know. Yes. Climb, climb up every mountain. Praise him, praise him, all ye little children. And I love those old hymns. What a friend we have in Jesus. And the old rugged cross. And holy, holy, holy. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. And sweet hour of prayer. Oh, those songs. They are just in my heart, in my mind, in my soul. They lift me out of a troubled spirit and give me the spirit of joy when I'm down. Music is indeed medicine for the soul. Mozart said, music is not in the notes. It's in the silence between. Mm. Billy Graham, he selected these hymns for his memorial service. Until then... All hail the power, above all, because he lives. To God be the glory and amazing grace. Amazing grace. 
Yes. That song, it has an amazing history. Yes. It's a Christian hymn that was published in 1779. Words written in 1772 by an English poet who was also an Anglican clergyman, John Newton. It is an immensely popular hymn, particularly in the United States, where it is used for both religious and secular purposes. Now, Newton, he wrote the words from personal experience. He grew up without any particular religious conviction, but his life was formed by a variety of twists. He was forced into service by the Royal Navy. And after leaving that, he became involved in the Atlantic slave trade. He was a slaver. In 1748, a violent storm battered his vessel off the coast of County Donegal, Ireland, so severely that he called out to God for mercy. The slave captain calling out to God for mercy. This moment marked his spiritual conversion, at which time he wrote the words for amazing grace and the fear of loss of his life and his soul. But he didn't quit slave trading right away. He continued until 1754 when he ended that career. And that's when he began studying for the ministry and later became an abolitionist. He was ordained in 1764. And the amazing grace was written to illustrate a sermon in 1773. It's unknown if there was any music accompanying the verses. It may have just been chanted by the congregation. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. It's unknown if there was any music accompanying the verses. It may have just been chanted with the message that forgiveness and redemption are possible regardless of sins committed and that the soul can be delivered from despair through the mercy of God. Amazing Grace is one of the most recognizable songs of the English-speaking world. It had particular influence on folk music and has become an emblematic black spiritual. Its universal message has been a significant factor in its crossover to secular music. Amazing Grace has become very popular and became popular during the revival of folk music in the United States during the 60s. And it's been recorded thousands of times during the 20th century. It was played in America during tragic times. The Trail of Tears. You may not know about the Trail of Tears. But it was a forced relocation during the 1830s of eastern woodland Indians. Those in the southeast region of the United States, including the Cherokee, the Creek, the Chicka Chickasaw, the Choctaw, and the Seminole, among some others too. Now what was happening was that they were all being moved to a territory west of the Mississippi River. And on that trail, some 15,000 of those Native Americans died on that journey. But it was played, this tune, on the flute, the Indian flute, as they walked that trail of tears. It consists of some 5,045 Five miles across portions of nine states, Alabama, Arkansas, Georgia, Illinois, Kentucky, Missouri, North Carolina, Oklahoma, and Tennessee. Can you imagine walking that? You might have dropped dead too. Well, along the way, the Indian nations, they played that tune, they called it, Amazing Grace, played on the Native American flute. Perhaps when we walk our own trail of tears, we might sing that tune, and it would be likely to lift our spirits, lift our worship. C.S. Lewis, he said, whenever his people gather and worship him, God promises he will make his presence known in their midst. 
whoever we are, wherever we are. Psalm 95, 6. Come, let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let us pray that prayer together that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, till we meet again, God be with you, and God bless you. Amen.